My name is Rosie Goldsmith and welcome to my riveting interview series, Conversations with Authors from All Over the World. My nickname is Rosie the Riveter and one of my great passions is introducing readers to riveting writers. You may already know The Riveter, our magazine of international writing, as well as our online riveting reviews and riveting reads. They're all dedicated to giving foreign writers in English translation the prominence they deserve which is exactly what I want to do with this series of riveting audio and video interviews. They're all free via our website, eurolitnetwork.com. Welcome to today's riveting author. Nino Haricvili is one of the most exciting authors I have discovered in a long time. And I'm delighted that she's with me here today in the building of the German embassy. It's an absolutely beautiful building. And uh, we're here for a conversation about Nino's uh, great book, which has just been published in English. It's called The Eighth Life, Das Achte Leben in German. Nino is Georgian. She was born in Georgia and moved to Germany in 2003 and writes in both Georgian and German. So welcome, Nino. Um, where are you in your head today? Are you Georgian, German, English? Trying to be in English. <laughs> <laughs> How many languages do you speak? Four. So Georgian, Georgian German. Russian, German, and English. I mean, I would like to, uh, my English to be better, but... You wrote The Eighth Life, Das Achterleben, in German. Why did you write it in German? I write in German since... I guess 16 years. I moved to Germany 2003 and 2006 I wrote my first play uh, in German. It was more of practical reasons because I um, wanted to stage a play of mine and um, I was quite fluent in German uh, at that time and I decided to write this play in German to not to be forced to translate it <laughs> from Georgian into German. So somehow while writing in German, I discovered that I really like this approach. I like this, um, um, it's, when it's not your mother language, it's kind of more experimental, more playful. You, you always just think about, oh, maybe I can uh, do it in a other way or I can choose some other words. So in your mother language, you always do things kind of automatically right. And I've been also told that my German is somehow Georgian, so I think it's also something that is in me and with me. And um, I've often been asked if I would write in Georgia when I would go back, and I don't have an answer because my whole professional life as a writer it started and continued in Germany, in German. So I'm not quite sure, because, but I hope, of course, if I would spend some more time in Georgia, I would stay there for two, three, four years. Um, maybe I would just like go back into Georgian language, but of course, I don't know it for sure. Do you feel German? Or do you feel Georgian or both? <laughs> both. I mean, while I'm in Germany, I always feel Georgian. You were born in Tbilisi, yes. in Georgia, um, about 35 years ago. <laughs> I don't like being ages. So you're very young, but you were born in a Soviet state. Was that difficult for you? Is that, is that what you were escaping to when you went to live in Germany? Uh, not really, because the Soviet, I mean, when I went to school, 90... 89, <laughs> the world starts shaking. So as a child, you don't really realize what's going on. Somehow it all, everything's kind of normal and even everything would happen afterwards, like this, this protests and demonstrations and military conflicts and I mean wars and everything. Somehow as a child, you don't really realize it's, still kind of fun because you I always felt uh, protected by my parents and still I mean I remember all the things like shootings outside or um, no no electricity and really really challenging really difficult times but still I, I was not really aware what was going on so I really realized it years later what we've been through um, and 
I don't think that I was escaping the Soviet heritage, maybe I could say that. But um, I, I wanted to, when I came to Germany, I was 20 and I was, I was really longing for something new because it was a really tough time, difficult time. It was still the Shevardnadze period and everything was... So Edward Shevardnadze was, um, was the, the leader of Georgia. Oh, so there have been a lot of corruptions going on and a lot of, and also I wanted to study, I want to learn a lot of things. I wanted to experience as every, I, I guess, <laughs> everyone who is 18 or 20. So I, I was seeking for adventures and um, also the cultural life. It was really, really, there was not much going on. I mean, since then changed a lot. So Georgia today is completely different than Georgia then, back then. So um, that's why I just wanted to make cut and just like I was so hungry because I wanted to hungry for all these experiences. And um, I wanted to study theater and stage directing and I had just like some goals. So it was like, okay, just go and discover and do and experience. And I'm really, really um, happy that I did that. And you went to Germany? Yes, I went to Germany. It was kind of uh, easier for me because I, I spoke German language. My mom was working there, so it was kind of logical to go there, try there. Um, yes, and I ended up in Hamburg. So um, there you are in Germany, um, a young, fresh, creative person, and, you, <laughs> and you, you write plays, you direct plays, and uh, then you start writing novels. So you've written three novels so far. Um, you've done a very, you've done a lot in a very short time. Uh, <laughs> and one of the novels happens to be about a thousand pages long. How on earth did you find the time to write The Eighth Life? <laughs> it was easier before becoming mother. <laughs> um, I don't know, you know, I really, really love writing and I really love the process. And there are a lot of writers, colleagues, they're always complaining that it's so hard and they're suffering so much. I never felt this way because why I would do something so I suffer. So for me, it was <laughs> always a pleasure. Um, but I'm more interested in the process than in the result. So... And I often, really often, I mean, almost all my novels I did write in the night. I'm night owl, and I really, You're really, night owl. yeah, and I really, really love this quiet hours where nobody's phone is not ringing, nobody's texting you, so you kind of fully concentrated. I mean, I cannot do so <laughs> since I have kids, but um, but I'll yes. And I didn't really felt, and of course, also maybe it, it works like I'm a workaholic and writing all the time. Um, it's not this way, but I, it took me three years. So I already had a theater publisher for my place, but it took me like almost three years to find a publisher. So while this chasing and uh, searching, uh, I already had like my second novel. So it, it, it felt when the first one was published, the second one came like year uh, after because I already had uh, written it. And that's why maybe it seems that I'm, I've been writing all the time. Um, but maybe it's also because I, yeah, I, I kind of really love it. And I, it doesn't really feel like working. So let's talk um, in more detail about um, The Eighth Life, because it, not just because it is uh, beautifully written, which it is, and you have already your own style, which is magical, <laughs> but also it's very lyrical, it's funny, um, it's very moving, and you also have great insight into politics and history. And I wonder um, why you wanted to write this novel. I didn't really plan to write this book. I wanted to write about a period in my life when I grow up, about the 90s, 1990s in Georgia. I already mentioned it was really a tough time, challenging time. It had a huge impact on every every Georgian lived in that period. And I remember a lot of really extreme things. And I'm interested in extreme conflicts and extreme relationships. This is, I think, maybe this is something I'm 
where's my focus on. But um, and somehow I started to read about that time and watch some movies and remembering and talking with people. And I realized that it's really difficult to describe it. And I also knew, okay, I'm going to write this book in German and it's First of all, just like for the Western readers, it means people don't have a lot of information um, about that part of the world. So somehow I have to, maybe I have to explain kind of more. And then I started my time traveling. And while doing that, so and ended up in the 80s and then 70s and 60s. And uh, while doing this research and while planning this novel and the structures, I realized that I was... I. There have been so many things that I really didn't know. And I had such a lack of information. And my, my, all my knowledge of the 20th century and the historical facts, it's been from the Western perspective, Western point of view. And I really, somehow it shocked me realizing that. And I thought, how can it be? I mean, I grow up there, but it was like a puzzle. You know, you have these tiny parts, but you don't have the whole picture. And I started digging and doing this research. And I kind of become um, obsessed by that because there have been so many things to discover. And um, yes, then I ended up uh, at the October Revolution. And then I was a little bit... Suddenly uh, you were in 1917. So it seems like a good point to start. So I thought, OK, if it's about this regime, about Soviet, um, Soviet era, um, it's kind of maybe a logical point to start there. And yes, then it become really a huge adventure. And, uh, and here we are. With here this. we are. <laughs> I mean, whatever comes after the eighth life, das Achterleben, um, or whatever came before, this will always in some way define you. It's, I guess so. <laughs> you get that feeling. I mean, this has been such a great success. Um, not just in sales and so on too, but for you, because this is, you put everything into this novel. And it's about um, six generations of one family. It's about chocolate making. It's about Europe. It's about the whole world in many ways. And it's about women. Um, it's about war. It's about revolution. It's, uh, it's, it, it's everything, the whole world in one book. On one hand, it's, it's great. And I really i am so thankful that I'm meeting so many people uh, and this book means so much to them. I had a, a reading tour now and uh, some weeks ago through Netherlands and there have been some people just like uh, sharing all the emotions. And of course, I'm kind of, I feeling really um, lucky and thankful and grateful. But sometimes it's also, I mean, I want to go on. Since then I've written uh, other novel and for me it's important to just like start anew and do But if they, if they say things. to you, this is the Georgian war and peace, this is the Georgian Anna Karenina, it's a big, it's a big burden to carry in a way. Yes, but yes, it is. it is. So somehow you have to, I, um, it was really, really difficult after uh, the eight lives starting the next book. Um, it took me a while because yes, it, it is a burden. And I know that everyone is going to compare everything what I write with this book and it's really, it's kind of also disturbing because I cannot, I don't want to repeat myself. I don't want to write, the next, okay, the next one is going to be 2,000 pages. It's silly. <laughs> it's not about that. So I, I somehow I have to be free to, to chase and uh, find the, the issues and themes I want to write about. This is important. So it took me a while, but it's always the same. I mean, uh, starting new books, this is what I really hate. This <laughs> beginning it's and of course you've had a baby you've got two children since then so fine yeah. I mean is it difficult to find the time to write now I have to, yeah it is but it's not impossible I mean I, I guess it's for it's like with every working mom you have to find the balance and you need a really you need supporting people it's really important to have a good network. Nino, thank you very, very much indeed. It's lovely having you here with us in London and um, what an amazing book it is. Thank you very much.